Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Higurashi. Uh, what were we doing last time? I actually forgot. Hold on. Right, now I remember. It was that, uh, K it was that KT stopped believing, or at least it seemed like anyway, he stopped believing Rinna's crazy theories while Rinna was, you know, b doubling down on it. She's like, ah, oh, it really was true. These people are here to kill me, and then she ran away. That's right. All right. Good refresher. Let's continue. They were mowing the grass near the fence, which is probably a cover to monitor the surroundings. Just in case I tried to escape the school. But they must have been thinking that would have happened only after school was over. They seemed to have no idea that I'd already noticed their plan and was trying to run away right at that very moment. I couldn't use the front gate, since they'd find me easily. I moved behind the school building, made sure nobody was around the curry garden, ran through it, and dashed into the forest. I walked through the dense undergrowth, stepping on dead wood and climbing over fallen trees. After walking through the forest for a while, I came to a small road. I know many back roads in this village because of our club activities, and that knowledge had finally come in handy. So, what should I do now? I'm sure the girl already passed on my message to Chi-sensei. Those men must be going crazy by now, knowing that I ran away. Sure. <laughs> No, no, she just, she just left. Everyone in the class looked at each other and shook their heads. Chi Sensei looked a bit upset that Rina left school early without telling her in person. I think I know what's going on. I'm not sure, but I have a very bad feeling about this. She must have taken another ridiculous story seriously or something. I hope she won't do anything crazy. So it's clear Keiichi doesn't believe her. <laughs> I hurried home. My father might be at his new job, or he might have gone shopping. He wasn't around when I got there. Now that they're on the move, I'm no longer safe in my house. They're very dangerous people. They're trained to be capable of attacking the Ministry of Construction. And they actually pulled off the kidnapping the grandson of the minister, excuse me. Locked doors and windows don't mean anything to them. In fact, it'd be like I was hiding in a box, which they could just open up to get at me. I could no longer stay at my home. It's very sad and very frustrating. I killed Rena and Tepi, and finally regained a peaceful life with my father. How could this happen to me? That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Killing off the bad people and wondering why uh, everything's not happy and perfect. I remembered what Kei kun told me before. It expressed my feelings better than anything. Why did she give me those terrifying scrapbooks? Why did she tell me the secret of that unthinkable conspiracy? She got me into this. I didn't do anything, it's all Mio-san's fault. But who was interested in her stories? I was. Who let her continue talking? I did. I did that out of curiosity. And that's a similar thing again to when uh, Keiichi was blaming himself for going into the Forbidden Storehouse. Which, you know, he said it was his fault because he was curious and... He went through with it. Who let the memories of Ibaraki return and told Mio-san about them? 
I did. I depended on Mio-san, hoping that she could somehow save me from the memories I'd been trying to forget. I shouldn't have remembered anything about that bizarre incident. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gotten involved in that unthinkable conspiracy, and I could have just played around with my friends today. But even if I didn't know about the conspiracy, I'd still continue behind the scenes. Or it'd still continue behind the scenes. I would have been one member of the mob running in a panic, not knowing what's going on in the day of Oyashiro Sama's revival. I would have been just swallowed up in their conspiracy anyway. Would I have been happier if I faced that day without knowing anything? Would I be happier if I struggled, knowing about it but ending up swallowed by it? If I'm going to end up the same way no matter what I'll choose, I'll fight. I'll choose to fight. Because that's how I seized my happiness before. When Rena invaded my home, seducing my father, I felt like it was the end of the world. I lived on the verge of despair every day. I thought that was the worst misfortune that could befall anyone. But the way things are going, it wasn't really that bad after all. I had only two enemies, Rina Mamiya and Tepi Hojo. I knew my enemies and I knew how many there were. I lured them out one by one and I attacked them in the dark. It was a very easy problem to solve. But what about this one? I don't know who my enemies are, and I don't know how many or how strong they are. Even the people I once trusted might be my enemies. I can't possibly be sure. It's totally different from the previous problem. This might be the end of the world. This time, it really was the worst thing that could possibly happen. But is that really the case? With Rena, I felt like it was the end of the world, but I no longer think it was that bad. So this might turn out to be an easy problem to solve in the end, and I might be able to laugh about it someday. I know that day will come. I know it for sure. So I shouldn't think that this is the end of the world. Let's fight. I can fight. I can still struggle. I'd eat grass and drink mud if I needed to. I'm going to bet on the 1% chance even though it's unbelievably small. If Mio-san didn't leave me the scrapbooks, I wouldn't even have been able to sit at the table to bet. I was lucky that I received the scrapbooks because they gave me the chance to choose my future. If I don't fight, they'll spread the terrible parasite and this village will face a great disaster. According to the legend, when the demons first came out of the swamp, people became demons right after being infected. And it happened while they were inside the village. These days, symptoms appear only when the infected people leave the village, but that only applies to the later weak parasite. The original parasite can reenact the curse of Oyashirasama even when the infected are in the village. The legend of Oyashiro Sama will be reborn. Humans and demons will start killing each other, and Oyashiro Sama will come down to pacify the disaster. That's what they want. They want people to prostrate themselves before that miracle, and only the people who truly worship Oyashiro Sama will be saved. I see. I know their true intention now. They're going to reenact the legend of Oyashiro-sama. After all, the villagers always say that Rika-chan is his reincarnation. The stage is all set. They're going to use the parasite as... the curse. So... How are they going to make it look like Oyashiro-sama came down to pacify everyone? I get it. They must have some kind of medicine. A specific cure for the parasite. When they recreated the stronger form of the parasite, they found a cure for it at the same time. They're going to use this cure to save only those people who believe in Oishiro-sama, and as a result this village will only have those fervent believers. 
They're going to make themselves the absolute rulers of Hinamizawa. Wait. I still might be underestimating them. Are they going to carry out that horrifying act of bioterrorism only inside Hinamizawa? History proves that when their goal is to control others, people desire to spread their religion across a wide area. I'm sure that they conducted research not only to bring back the primitive form of the parasite, but also to overcome its weakness, namely that it only thrives in Hinamizawa. According to Miyosan's research, the parasite doesn't like its host to be far from the region. Its weakness is distance. If they could extend the distance, if they could extend the area where it can live. I wonder how far along their research is. By now, the parasite might be able to live not only in Hinamizawa, but in Okinamiya as well. Or maybe even in the city? Maybe the whole prefecture. It might be able to cover nearby prefectures as well. This is too serious to just call it a conspiracy. It's horrifying enough and its scale large enough to call it a revolution. The day of revival is probably not far off. I can tell by how they killed Miyosan and by the extent of their pressure they're putting on me. They're trying to get rid of the small fishbone stuck in their throat by any means because that day is coming ever closer. I'm the only one who can stand up against their revolution. I can't trust anybody. I think I can trust Keiichi-kun. That is, until he reveals that he doesn't believe you. Then, you know, I don't know, you'll probably stab him or something. But no one else. Mi-chan is out of the question. I can't trust Riku-chan either. Satoku-chan and Riku-chan stick together like super glue. So I can't trust Satoku-chan either. I can't trust any adults. I can't trust anybody. No one is on my side. I have to stand up against them alone. The clock is ticking towards that day, and the ticking noise made me frustrated. How could I fight against them? What should I do? I needed time to think. I needed a place, a safe area, where I could concentrate on thinking. Fortunately, I had such an area already. My hideout at the garbage dump. Nobody ever goes there, so it's safe. Even if they found out about that place, I'm familiar with its surroundings. I know escape routes and places where I can hide. But it has a big shortcoming as a hiding place. It's not hard to imagine what that is. I don't have any stock of food there. That's why I came home. I opened one of my father's drawers and took out his cash box. The contents haven't changed since the last time I looked inside. There were many new 10,000 yen bills in the cash box. I took them all. I couldn't tell how many bills there actually were, but it looked to be about 80 of them. This should be plenty. If I evaded them long enough to use all of this money, that would mean that I did pretty well. Plus, I might use it to buy someone off. You can never have too much money, especially in a situation like this. I didn't take the bank book. If they were waiting an ambush at the bank, I'd be done for. It's too risky to withdraw money at the bank. I grabbed my backpack. I took the key for my bicycle. I put everything I think would be convenient to have into the backpack. I didn't care if it got heavy. I'd choose what was necessary to carry around later at my hideout. If there ended up being something I didn't need, I could leave it there. I looked at the clock. It had been 30 minutes since I came home. I stayed here too long. I rushed out of the house. I went to a small convenience store and bought as much sweet bread and canned food as I could fit into my backpack. An old lady was at the register. Probably suffering from dementia, she showed no interest in the extraordinary amount of food I was buying. 
But as soon as the manager of the store checked the sales that night, he'd find out. The idea didn't bother me, because I could no longer walk around the village in the daylight anyway. My backpack was full, and the cans hurt my back as I walked. But that didn't bother me either. I got to my hideout, still carrying the heavy backpack. I organized the stuff I brought. It was very heavy to carry, but now I had sufficient food. The abandoned construction office still has running water, so I could get some from there. I wanted to get some vegetables, but in a situation like this I could hardly complain. After I organized things, I took up the scrapbooks I hid there, here, and put my brain into top gear, flipping through the pages. So now what? How am I going to stand up against this gigantic conspiracy? I needed to calm down, stay cool, but also to think fast. There might not be a lot of time, so I'd have to hurry, but I don't know what to do. It's easy to run to school in the morning when I overslept. It's easy because I know where I should go. But... Now, I don't know where I should go or what I should do. Now that I've come to this point, I should tell Oishi San everything. It's highly likely he's an enemy. But that doesn't matter anymore. If it was true, I'd just declare war. But if he was on my side, he'd be my only remaining hope. I'm far too weak to stand alone against the terrifying scale of this conspiracy poised to instill fear throughout Japan. I'd have to use a public phone to make the phone call. There's only one public phone in this village that stands at a place where it's hard for people to spot you. That phone booth. It stands in the middle of nowhere where nobody really comes around. Many bugs gather around the light when it's dark, and it's not a pleasant place to go. But I can't think of any other public phones I can use to contact wishy san without being seen. Even though it stands in the middle of nowhere, it's still dangerous to use in the daylight. I should wait until nightfall and take advantage of the darkness. I heard that wishy san has been holed up in the station since Mio-san's murder case, so I should be able to reach him any time. I have the number for the direct line to his office, too. The sky was still bright. Even though I had no time, I still had to wait for it to get dark. Frustrated, I glared at the sunset. I should find something to do. I couldn't waste any time that I had, so there must be something to do. After I thought about what I could do, I found there was something I wanted to confirm. Something I'd been worried about. I couldn't do anything else before it got dark anyway. Staying here doing nothing would just make me more frustrated. I made my decision and left the hideout. Rinna's father paced up and down relentlessly in front of his house. A bicycle appeared, its rider ringing the bell. <laughs> A police officer from the Hinamizawa police station had shown up. Having rushed to get there, he was breathing hard. <sighs> he led the police officer into the house. <laughs> there was a, a robber here. ご主人、これはその時のまま触ってない。ええ、犯人の指紋とかあるだろうと思いまして、金庫には触れてません。ただ中身を確認したので、中のものには少し触れています。うん、うん。それで取られたものは貯金通帳と印鑑は大丈
プロは現金しか持ってかないんですよねこりゃだいぶ手慣れた空き巣かな<笑>金庫ごと持ってかないでこの場で開けちゃうってんだから相当のプロだねでお金はどのくらいやられちゃってうんちょっと数えてなかったんですが多分1万円札で100万近くはあったと思いますあーあそうそれだけの現金が入ってることを誰かに知らせたいえ誰にも知らせてはいませんがあの女たちならこの家に金があることを知っていたかもあの女うんちょっとお話を聞かせていただけますか実はあまりみっともいい話じゃないんでお恥ずかしいんですがマミヤリナという女とですね Just then, the phone rang. <sighs> すみませんちょっと出てきますねすぐ戻ります He grabbed the phone マシュマーシュはいリュウグーですマシュマーシュあすみません前原と申しますがレナさんはいらっしゃいますかレナはまだ帰ってきてませんまだ帰ってないうん申し訳ないんですがちょっと今立て込んでます遊びの電話でしたらまたかけ直していただけますかね申し訳ないですね失礼いたします He hung up after that. I was stunned. It didn't look like anything had changed on the surface. It was hard to find this place at all because it perfectly blends in with the surroundings. I only found this place again because I remembered there was a tree with a big lump of wood on it nearby. The spot where I buried the corpses was perfectly camouflaged, as if nothing had happened. That's why at first I thought I came to the wrong place. But I could make certain once I stick a shovel in the ground. I mean, that you're kind of ruining your whole plan if you start disturbing the area. I should be able to tell right away whether this place was dug up before or not. After several false starts, I found the exact spot where I buried the corpses. But the biggest problem of all is that there are no bags in there at all. Why? How come? Did I bury them deeper than this? No, I didn't. I remembered exactly how deep I buried them. I know I didn't bury them deeper than this. I wasn't expecting this. I came here to check the corpses. I just wanted to do that to kill some time. I didn't want to stay in my hideout doing nothing, so I came here to check if the corpses I buried were still there. I'd make sure that they were still there, and I'd feel relieved. It was supposed to go like that. This was such an unexpected turn of events that I broke out into a cold sweat. What's going on? What's going on? I don't need to calm down to think about what happened. Corpses can't come back to life and crawl out of the ground. Someone must have dug them out. Who did it? And for what purpose? Did anyone happen to see us burying the corpses here? And did they dig them out after we left? What if they handed them over to the police? No, it can't be. It's been quite a while since the day we buried them here. It was before the Watanagashi festival. So if the police did find the corpses, when Oishi contacted me, He had to know about Rina and Tepi, but he didn't tell me anything about them. I don't think he was hiding anything on purpose either. So that means the police don't know about Rina and Tepi yet. Then why are the corpses gone? That would leave only one answer. Who knows about this place? One of us came back here, dug out the bags, and took them away. The first person who comes to mind is Mion. I mean, the Sonazaki, or the Sonazaki family. But I can't think of a reason why they would do that. The murder of Rina and Tepi has nothing to do with them. I'm sure they don't want to get involved either, let alone be falsely accused. 
They must want to stay as far away from this case as possible. Why would they want to keep the corpses? It's like keeping a Joker even though you'd lose if you have the Joker by the end of the game. If it was me, Chan, what would I do? What would I do if I was club president? The Joker is a card that you want to get rid of, at least in the game I mentioned earlier. But it becomes a powerful card in other games. What kind of game would that be? An electric shock ran through my spine. At the same time, I realized it. They are one step ahead of me. The Sonazaki family got the corpses to use them as a joker, as a wild card. They're trying to use them to sell me out to the police. The Sonazaki family is trying to kill me using their death squad. But they want to have insurance just in case they fail. The thing they're afraid of the most is that I might work together with the police. If they could prevent that from happening, I'd have no one to work with. If that happens, I can no longer run away from them. I'd still be a fish in their pond. They're going to use the corpses to sell me out to the police for the murder of Rena and Tepe. If the police started seeing me as a suspect, they'd never listen to my story. They could have been my last hope, but this will certainly turn them against me. But I'm sure the Sonazaki family doesn't want to use their Joker unless absolutely necessary. After all, me and Sonazaki helped bury the corpses. Plus, they don't want the police to hover around Hinamizawa when the day of revival is so close. I'm going to call Oishi tonight, and I'm going to ask him for help. I'm going to tell him everything, including the things I haven't even told Keiichi-kun. I don't know if Oishi will believe me. This is a gamble and my chance of winning is very small. Plus, my worst enemy has the Joker, the bags with the corpses inside. I'm impressed with Mion. That's just what I'd expect from the leader of our club. This is a battle that I'm betting my life on, but to Mion this is like a board game taking place across Hinimizawa itself. I grinned, repeating to myself that it's just a game. I put my life on the line for every club activity we do, because I don't want to suffer the punishment. This time, that's become the literal truth. There could be only one reason why they're trying so hard to drive me into a corner. It's because they're afraid of me. I assumed I was just a little girl with no power, running about in confusion. But my enemy must not be thinking that way. If they didn't think I was a threat to them, they wouldn't take risks like this to drive me into a corner. That means the scrapbook Mio-san left me must be way more dangerous to them than I think they are. I see. They have a Joker, but so do I. The Joker I have is so deadly and so powerful that it can break their plot into pieces. That's why they're so eager to find me. <laughs> a cornered mouse really can bite a cat. I felt my fear towards my enemies fade away all of a sudden. Just as I fear them, so do they fear me too. So this is a, an eventually matched game. Evenly, sorry. I don't have as bad a hand as I thought I did. I was right to come here. I found out about the card my enemy was holding. This is a big deal. I felt myself shiver with excitement. I grinned to encourage myself. I don't need to be here any longer. They know this place. They might come here to find me. It's not safe for me to stay here for long. I decided to go back to my hideout. 